Welcome to a Lifeline Health Lecture. Today we will be speaking about a very uh, amazing natural remedy. We will be speaking about the charcoal. And uh, the charcoal is really nature's amazing remedy. In uh, the year 1813, a French chemist um, had the idea to take 150 times the amount of arsenic that it takes to kill a person. So arsenic is a very, very strong uh, uh, poison, and he took 150 times the, 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 the dose, and he did it front of a public, front of uh, uh, a group of people, and nothing happened to him. Well... He just mixed the poison with a generous amount of charcoal. So charcoal has been known for thousands of years and has been used very efficiently for a lot of reasons that, will we, that we will be having a look at today. So let's start with finding out what charcoal is. Charcoal is uh, really nothing else but wood that has been burned under the uh, absence of oxygen. And so we have this uh, black charcoal that is left over. In most of the third world countries, it is very easy to find because people use it there for cooking. And it's a very inexpensive uh, product but we need to grind it. We can't use it in these uh, big chunks. And so uh, charcoal is prepared in different ways. It's uh, prepared in tablets, as we can see here, and it is prepared in uh, uh, capsules, and we can get it in powder form. Now, the tablets... I personally don't like them very much. Of course, if you don't have anything else, then please use it. But uh, the tablets uh, contain substances that make them stick together and hold together. And uh, you have to kind of digest them first because before the charcoal will become... Uh, a loose and free in your system so that it can really absorb uh, anything that you want it to absorb. The same thing is true for the, uh, for the capsules. You also have to digest them first. Another problem that I find with, these, uh, with the charcoal that you get in the pharmacy, and only sometimes you get it there, the other problem is that you need quite big quantities of charcoal in order for it to be effective. So uh, you would have to probably take this whole pallet here if you want to have a good effect with, uh, from these tablets. And um, so the, the way or the, the preparation I recommend most would be the powder. In powder form, it is the best way to use, and it is also the most inexpensive uh, way to uh, purchase it. Now, how does charcoal work? If you imagine, uh, a, this is a grain of charcoal here. Now, if you imagine a sponge, a sponge is full of holes and cavities and channels, and if you put a sponge on a wet table, it will just suck in all that water because of these holes and channels that are inside the sponge. And the charcoal um, works in a very uh, similar way. It also works in an electro electric way, but um, really we don't 100% understand how this wonderful remedy really uh, works. But uh, let's understand that it is like a very minute little sponge. And now in the last 200 years, we have been using activated charcoal. 
Now, activated charcoal is a charcoal that has uh, uh, an increased capacity of absorption. It is much more spongy. And what they use is uh, hot steam under a pressure, and then they produce the activated charcoal. It is much better than the regular charcoal because its capacity is, has been increased many, many times. Now here we have the charcoal that you will find in uh, most Latin American or probably most third world countries anyway because they use it for cooking. Now if you don't have anything else available, I would suggest that you take this, uh, these uh, uh, charcoal and then we, you have these uh, kind of, of mortar thing there and you just put it in your, in your container and you just grind it manually and grind it as fine as you can. Because the finer it is, the better it will work. So we can perfectly use the charcoal that is uh, used in the third world countries in, um, for cooking. Now, of course, that is not available here in the United States, but uh, here we usually have the uh, op opportunity to uh, purchase charcoal, even though it's not always very easy. Now, what are the advantages of charcoal? The advantages are it, it, that it is readily available. Yes, it is readily available in most uh, third world countries because uh, you can buy it there. But uh, in the United States, uh, sometimes it's quite difficult to find a source of charcoal because um, it is not a, a very, there are not too many dealers for, let's say it that way. So it's not that it doesn't exist, but it's kind of difficult sometimes to find where you can get it. Uh, if you uh, have our address and you need charcoal, we would be happy to send you some because we do distribute it too. Now, it is very simple to use, and that's one of the biggest advantages it has. It's so simple to use, and you can hardly make a mistake, and it is totally harmless. So you can take as much charcoal practically as you want to, and it will not hurt you. There, there are just no secondary effects, uh, negative effects to it. And then it is very, very highly effective. Now, there is some charcoal, especially in this country here, where we do a lot, or others, do a lot of barbecue, because I hope we don't do that anymore. So these barbecue briquettes, we should not use them because they contain chemicals that will help to ignite them and uh, so these chemicals are very toxic. So we must be careful. We cannot take these uh, charcoal briquettes that we use for barbecue and just grind them and use them as charcoal. That would not be possible. And then we should not uh, use either scorched foods. They are not very healthy. So let's avoid these uh, kind of uh, 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 products. Let's not use them as charcoal. Now, we can use the charcoal internally. And that is pretty easy because what we do there is we take a glass, take a big glass, and put some water on the bottom of the glass. And then you can put one or two heaped tablespoonful of uh, uh, charcoal into that glass and then you will stir it around to mix it well with the water. Now you have to have a little amount of water there because it's not all that easy to, uh, to mix it because it kind of repels the water. So once you got it well mixed, then you can fill up the glass with, uh, with uh, water and then you can drink it. Now, we need to take some precautions 
if we drink the charcoal, we should drink it between meals because if we drink it with a meal, then it might start to interfere con our, with our um, digestion and it might even absorb some of the nutrients. And also, if we are taking medications, we want to wait hopefully at least a couple of hours before we take the charcoal, because if not, it might just start to absorb our medications, and then they would probably not be very efficient. So let's be careful. Let's try to not take it right after a meal or with a meal, and uh, also let's wait a couple of hours after we took the medication. Now, the internal use has... a uh, quite a few different uses. Uh, one of the most important ones is probably against poisoning. It is a fantastic remedy against poisoning, and even in some hospitals, if you get there with some kind of a poisoning, they might use it. In others, it is not known. Then it is very good against intestinal gas. But now, don't use it every time you got a little bit gas in your uh, intestines. Don't use it uh, every day with the corrective diet, because if you go on the corrective diet, you get a lot of fiber that you, at the beginning, you may not be very used to it, and so you might produce a, a little bit of gas there. But don't take it every day against gas. But if you have real problem, you get like like abdominal pain from excessive gas in your intestines, then you can take it and it will absorb the gas. Then if we have uh, nausea or vomiting, it is fantastic against it, and it is probably one of the best things to use against nauseas and vomiting. And the same is true with diarrhea. If we have diarrhea, the best thing we can really do is to use charcoal because it will absorb whatever is uh, irritating our intestinal tract. Now, if we use it for poisoning, we want to try to use it as soon as possible. First 10, 15 minutes after somebody got poisoned with anything, it would be great to use it. And there could be an overdose of drug or, or a child who might have taken some uh, household chemicals, uh, uh, been drinking them, or, or we, might we may have uh, some food poisoning too. That could happen too. Maybe we had a bad meal that wasn't all that good. And then we want to take uh, charcoal. It will help to um, absorb the toxins that are hurting us there. Now, we want to drink it immediately as, as, uh, as, as soon as possible that we uh, can get our hands uh, on the charcoal. And uh, we want to drink a whole glassful at least with two tablespoonful. And then uh, uh, we want to drink hopefully a glassful afterwards. But if it is a very serious intoxication, like with uh, medication or, or um, some real uh, strong poisons, you can even put up to 10 tablespoons full of charcoal into a glass. You might not even be able to drink it, so put as much in there as you can that you can still drink it, and then you will drink it and then hopefully drink another glass full of clear water afterwards. And if you need to, if the symptoms are not getting any better, then you can even repeat it after 10 minutes again and drink another 10 tablespoonful of charcoal. And always try to have a, a, a glass full of clear water afterwards. That will make the charcoal much more effective. And then, of course, if it's a, a case of uh, intoxication then, or poisoning, then we want to take the person to the physician, if possible. Of course, many of you are from third world countries and you may be in a rural area where there is no access to a physician. But if you do have access, please take the person to a physician. Now, 
If it is a child that has been uh, poisoned, then we want to reduce to about half the amount of charcoal that we are using. And really, we should always have a glass full or a container full of charcoal in our medicine cabinet. Is that right or not? Well, no, it is not right. We should not have our charcoal in a medical, uh, in a medicine cabinet, because by now, after listening to all these uh, health lectures that we have presented so far, you should hopefully not have a medical cabinet anymore at home. You should the best have like a natural remedy cabinet or or a herbal cabinet, but hopefully no no medical cabin, uh, med, uh, no me, uh, no medicine cabinet anymore. But please have the charcoal at hand all the time because when you need it, it is almost always an emergency and you won't have the time to go and get it. Now, if we have people that are that have passed out, that are unconscious, then, of course, we cannot apply the charcoal because you would just choke them if you put it in their mouth. So that, we cannot do it. Now, if we have suffer from nausea or vomiting, maybe we've just had a bad meal or maybe we'd had some uh, vegetables with uh, some good bacteria on it that uh, we do not tolerate too well, and so now we are vomiting, then we want to take a big glass full with, uh, or water with two big heap tablespoonful of charcoal. And we want to drink it, and if the person throws it up again, well, if possible, give him another glass full if he will accept it or she. And even if they don't accept it afterwards, it will already help. Because I remember not too, um, uh, too long ago, I... Uh, I, uh, um, they called me to uh, an emergency situation because a worker was vomiting like crazy in the morning and, and he just couldn't, uh, he, he, he was just uh, terrible, exhausted from all this vomiting. And uh, what happened, he had had a meal very late in, in the evening. He had probably rice and beans and a steak like 10 o'clock in the evening. And that was very late. So his digestive system was not working very well anymore. And instead of being able to digest the food, it just sat in his stomach and, and started to putrefy in there. And next morning, he had a real good uh, poisoning, food poisoning. And so I gave him this glass full of charcoal. He wasn't, he had never seen it before, and, uh, but he, I could convince him to drink it. And of course, he immediately threw up again, but, and then he would not accept any more charcoal because he didn't know this stuff. And, um, but then he did get better pretty soon because that little bit of charcoal that was in his stomach helped him uh, a lot. And then uh, before he left his work, before he went back home, he came and asked me for a container full of charcoal because he was convinced that that was a product that had really helped him. Now, whenever the person shows up, if you can, give them another glass full of uh, charcoal. And pretty soon the throwing up will be over. And if they accept it, if it's possible, then always have a glass full of clear water afterwards. Now, with diarrhea, we have the same situation. If uh, somebody has diarrhea, drink two heap tablespoonful of charcoal in a glass of water and also have some water afterwards. And uh, each time that you feel you or that the person went to the restroom again, give them another glass full of, uh, of charcoal until... Uh, the diarrhea will stop. And it is a fantastic remedy against diarrhea. In uh, Mozambique, where we worked, for example, I always wished I had a charcoal factory there because in Mozambique, which is one of the really poorest countries in the world, it, um, 
the number one hospitalization course for children is diarrhea. And the government doesn't have one single medication against it. So I'm really praying and I'd like you to pray also that the Lord will enable us to build a little uh, a little uh, um, charcoal factory in Mozambique and hopefully in each other country, each other third world country too, because it doesn't really take that much. It takes a little hammer mill and a little, a little um, uh, uh, autoclave to uh, activate it and, and a dryer, and that's about all you need. So it's not a huge investment, but... Um, I would love to have these factories in all the third world countries and uh, even supply every family out in the country at least with charcoal because they don't have nothing. And it works against so many different uh, health problems and especially against vomiting and diarrhea. Now, if uh, it is a little child that is suffering from diarrhea, yes, you can also give the charcoal to a child. But when you do, when you have a child with diarrhea, always remember that little children uh, will dehydrate very, very fast. And so if they suffer diarrhea, please keep them well hydrated. Give them as much water as they will accept. Now, we don't only use it internally. We can also use it externally by making some apoltis. For external use, we can use it against uh, infections and inflammations. It works wonderful because it will pull the poison out of the infection or the inflammation. We can use it for eye or even for ear infections. But please don't put the powder in the ear on the, or in the eye. What we do is we'll make an apoltis and we put it just on top of the ear or on the eye. We can use it against lesions, like uh, any kind of damage that we have on our skin, we can use it. We can use it against bee stings. It's wonderful against bee stings. When you get stung by a bee, you should really always have it with you when you go camping or out into the country. And if you have that problem, uh, if you get stung by a bee, then don't bother about producing an apoltis there. Just put a little bit of saliva on there and, and put some charcoal in there and mix it in there. And it will immediately take the poison out of the bee sting. Then it is very effective also against spider and, uh, and snake bites. It's important in, in uh, areas, for example, uh, like uh, Florida and other hot areas in the U.S. where we have these terrible spider. Uh, I can't remember the name right now, but when it bites you, it will make uh, uh, your, it will like putrefy your, your muscles. And it's really something that is no medication against it. You can wonderfully use uh, the charcoal for it. Or even you can also use um, um, clay uh, 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 treatments there that will also absorb these uh, toxins. <clears throat> then we can also use it to detox our body. And that's wonderful because that's a very important remedy. Now, when you want to detox your body, then please don't take it every day orally. It's not a daily food. It's a remedy against something. Some people take it constantly and think that they are absorbing all their toxins from the inside. No, there are better ways to do that. So don't use it every day. And if you want to detox your body, the best way is probably to put it into a bathtub. Use two cups full of charcoal and put it into a cup full of warm water and then sit in there for about half an hour and you will feel tremendously relaxed. The, the, the charcoal bath is one of the most relaxing baths that you can 
can do. It is a little bit difficult afterwards to clean the bathtub because the charcoal might stain it a little bit black, but it is a wonderful way to detox. And if you have a lot of, uh, of pimples all over your body and toxins coming out, then take the charcoal bath. It is very good, and you can even take it uh, twice a week if you have some kind of a health concern and, and want to detox. It's a great way. Then uh, to make an apoltis, it is pretty easy. All we need is some chocolate container, a spoon, and a napkin or maybe a, 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 a towel, a paper towel, if we want to cover a bigger area with the charcoal. And now what we do, we will put a little bit of charcoal in a little container, as we can see that here. And then we will stir it with a little bit of water. Don't make it too liquid. Keep it nice and thick. And then we will just spread it out on a napkin or a paper towel or whatever. A napkin, if we have a wound or a bite or something, uh, uh, let's say a paper towel, if we want to detox our liver for uh, any kind of reason or any or our stomach area, if we want to detox our stomach and in the digestive area, then we can use a little bit bigger towels. And then we cover the, the charcoal with, uh, with another towel or another napkin, and then we put, put it in place. Once we put it in place, we have to use these plastic wrap. Plastic wrap, uh, you need to put, to, uh, to put it around the charcoal poultice because as soon as the charcoal gets dry, it will not work anymore. So it has to be humid. It has to be wet. And that's why we want to put around this plastic wrap. And then you can put, leave the poultice on there for any time you want to. You can put it on there. You can keep it on there overnight or all day long or or whatever you decide uh, is necessary. Now, if you put on a poultice in any part of your body, you want to rinse the body and wash the body well with soap first because there may be some toxins already because, remember, we detox through our skin quite a bit, and so let's wash it clean first so that the, that the charcoal will not get filled with all the toxins that we got on the skin already. Let's wash it nicely, and then we can put the apolitis on it, and then um, once it, uh, we have had it on there for the time that we had decided, it may be 15 minutes or maybe uh, uh, eight hours or, or longer, then we want to throw out the poultice. We do not want to use it again because it has already absorbed the toxins and we want to prepare, prepare a new poultice. You can see here very nicely how it's done. You just spread out the, the wet charcoal there and then you take the other part of the napkin and close it and then you can put it on the area that you want to treat and uh, uh, afterwards, you want to cover it up with the plastic wrap. Now, if you, have, uh, if you are treating multiple bee stings or spider or snake bites, especially in this country, you always want to take the people or the person to the physician, to the hospital or, or wherever, because... Uh, they may be able to do a little bit more efficient things for that patient. And if you don't take them, especially in this country, it's very dangerous because they may make you responsible for not doing uh, what you are legally required to do, to take the person to a hospital or to a physician. Now, wherever you go, whether you go camping or where you go to your office, wherever, I mean, in your car, in your office, in your backpack, you should always have some charcoal available. You should always have some charcoal with you. And you'll be surprised how often you will be using it for yourself or for others. Because many times you just ate something and, oh, somehow it didn't, 
it, didn't, it doesn't feel too good. Take a glass full of charcoal and whatever was in there, it will absorb it. Now, the treatment for venomous bites or stings. Now, this is a very good treatment, especially if no serum is uh, available for, for the treatment, like in many times in third world countries in the, out in the country, uh, there is really nothing available. And so we really depend on this kind of, uh, of uh, charcoal treatment. If we have been bit or somebody else, the first thing we want to do again, wash the area, wash it nice and clean. And then we want to put uh, the extremity, whether it's the hand or the arm or the leg or whatever, we want to put it into uh, uh, a bath. Like here, uh, you want to use, let's say, about two gallons of water with half a cup full of charcoal. About two gallons of water with half a cup full of charcoal. And then you put the extremity in there so that for at least half an hour so that it will suck out the poisons that have gone in, gotten in to the wound by, through the bite. And then after we have soaked the extremity for at least an hour, then we will take it out and then we will apply an apoltis. And if, it's a, if it was a snake bite or a venomous uh, a spider spite, then we may have to change it every 15 minutes for, for let's say, half a day or so. Uh, changes as often as possible so that you always get fresh charcoal into on that area there and that you can uh, really uh, uh, draw the poison out. And uh, don't forget that you always want to cover it up with the uh, plastic wrap because as soon as the charcoal gets dry, it will not work anymore. And the third measure that we are going to take is we want to take a glass full of charcoal with uh, at least two to uh, four tablespoonful of uh, charcoal. We want to drink that and then uh, in about half an hour, we want to repeat the, the drinking of the charcoal. And then another half an hour, we drink another quantity. So we want to repeat it at least three times uh, after we got stung or bit by a venomous uh, a spider or snake. So remember, we're doing three different things. We are using the bass, submerge the extremity. We're going to use an apoltis and we're going to drink it. So we're going to attack this poison from wherever we can. And now if you get a swelling in the area, then we can apply a bag full of ice. We can cool the area down because if it swells, it means a lot of blood is coming into that area and we, we want to avoid that because the more blood we get into these uh, area where the poison is located, the more it will get distributed in the area. So we want to uh, uh, cool the area and keep the swelling down. Now, this uh, uh, charcoal remedy is really something that we really should have always with us and always at home, and especially if you go overseas. If you maybe want to do some missionary work over, your, you, over there, you should always have the charcoal with you because you might get... Um, a problem with it with the food that you're going to eat over there and sometimes it is contaminated uh, in third world countries they don't always have refrigeration and so uh, you may be sensitive also the the hygienic uh, measures are not always perfect so have some charcoal with you it will definitely help you and it is a really fantastic remedy and please pray that the Lord will open the way for us to establish uh, little charcoal factories in different countries around the world so that we can help especially the rural, fact, the, the rural uh, population. Now, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to, put the, to shame the wise. 
And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And if we look at the charcoal, then we really have a wonderful example here how God has chosen one of the most simplest remedies on, in the world to compete against uh, uh, expensive and, uh, and high-tech drugs and pharmaceuticals. And this product uh, will do a better job than many other things that we could use. Thank you. Thank you. 